Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2CTM. Um, I thought I would just throw up a video here which I'm going to entitle a straw poll. Um, what I'd like to do is some garner some feedback from you on um, what to do for the next sort of build. Um, and I'm sort of thinking there's, there's three options there plus a fourth. Um, so in no particular order. Uh, the first option is to uh, is to do a portable, and I don't mind, it was, well this stage is going to be a 40 metre uh, SSB rig. So that's, if you recall, is, is re-housing this one. This is an 80 metre rig, so I'd be looking to, to basically go through the whole circuit and uh, redesign it for um, 40 metres. Um, I want to go away from the, the, the dual J310 um, amplifiers here. Not because I don't like using these, but um, I'm trying to squeeze this into this container here. Um, and it's quite a bit small in every dimension. It's quite a bit smaller there. It's small on that dimension. And uh, I think in an effort to try and make it as small as possible to even get a chance of fitting in here, um, I want to redesign all the amplifiers to try and make them as small as possible. Um, it won't be SMD, it'll be through hole. Um, and that's just the way it's going to be. Um, this is using the NE612s um, that we've used in the past and I'd look to sort of replace that OLED to screen with the VFO that was built up a couple of, week backs, a couple of weeks back. Um, went to a surplus electronics store and managed to score some, some little relays so they're quite a bit smaller than the originals. So I'd probably look to use those. Uh, in fact, we'll look to use those. Um, let's probably swap out this filter here for um, a smaller XF92A out of the junk box um, but like I say rebuild this redo all the uh, the circuits um, go through all the maths again uh, redo the audio amplifier and the microphone amplifier um, have a think about what I might want to do for the power amplifier uh, all in effort to try and squeeze into there so that's so that's option number one um, option number two if I can just clear that away would be to uh, I'll just call it revamp uh, the SDR rig. So you recall um, some time ago we were playing around with this. Um, it's an SDR rig based on the uh, the Tensi 3.5 here. Um, it'd be quite nice to sort of go through that from from left to right. Um, have a look at the, there's audio isolation transformers. You know, is there a better way of doing that? Um, Again, this is using the any 612s as the filters there, as so again as the mixers. Um, is that an approach, or would I want to potentially look at using, um, say, SBL1s? Uh, maybe just have a bit of a think about that one. Uh, it'd be really nice to emulate what Han Summers did with uh, his latest QRP rig, where um, he was using a phasing rig where the oscillator was from the SBL1 not sorry, my apologies, from the SI5351 board, he was managing to produce quadrature outputs uh, from that. Um, I really haven't had time to have a good look at that to see if I could do that myself, um, but it'd be great to be able to, to crack that nut, which would do away with the uh, that whole quadrature clock generator portion down here. So that would be, that'd be something to look at um, as part of that rebuild of the SDR rig. Another potential option there would be to go away from the 16x2 um, screen here and potentially go for um, a more of a uh, an OLED screen there, which would then allow the ability to start doing some um, FFT work and, and the like. So that's potentially an option there too. Um, but like I say, just sort of go to that whole SDR rig and, uh, and rebuild that one. So that would be sort of option number two. Um, option number three, um, I'm just going to call that a Greenfields, um, a Greenfields rig, uh, I think 40, 40 metres or 20 metres, um, I don't mind. Um, I know that 80 metres is not very popular uh, in, in the Northern Hemisphere, or certainly in um, North America, so more than happy to, to look at say a 40 or a 20 metre rig. Um, I can see that being um, SSB. Um, and then what I would like to use are a couple of devices which I haven't used before, um, either a, uh, an MC1350P, a variable gain um, amplifier there on a uh, little uh, IC, 
or potentially a differential video amplifier, the ENI 592. Both of those have been suggested um, as amplifiers some time ago and um, they've been on the back burner just waiting for a rig to actually play around with those. I haven't used these before, I don't know how to use them, so uh, they'll be part and parcel of this Greenfields radio is to actually to learn how to, to how to use those and how to um, how to get them going. Um, I, I think in terms of the mixes for that particular radio there, uh, I've bought some more from a different supplier, albeit from AliExpress. Uh, what it, what it claimed to be ADE dash ones. Um, they didn't cost very much at all, so if they don't work again, haven't lost much money at all. So it'd be nice to sort of play around and uh, see if they work. Um, if they don't, uh, then uh, I got from the same organisation or the same supplier a couple of SBL ones. Uh, I don't know if these have been used before. They don't look like it. Um, but again, they didn't cost very much. If they don't work, then they haven't lost much at all. I got from another supplier there a couple of SBL ones which came with the legs cut off. So clearly it had been sold onto a, another board and it has been cut off and then sold. Um, again, I, I have no idea if they're blown or not, but um, it didn't cost very much. But anyway, I can see uh, either the ADE-1s or the SBL-1s being used uh, in that Greenfields 40 or 20 meter SSB rig. Uh, in terms of the crystal filter, again, probably just use uh, that XF92A um, as the filter for that particular radio. Um, and then I guess the fourth option here, if I want to give four, would be um, something else. Um, and when I say something else, um, exactly that. I'm open to ideas there. Um, noting that my interests are in the HF band, uh, and more so in the lower band, is, is where I like to sort of to operate. Um, I don't have a huge amount of interest up in the VHF and UHF or sort of some of the other modes. Um, haven't really got in digital modes, but like I say, over to some ideas here. And if uh, in that particular straw poll, if something strong comes out um, over and above the others, then then I'll certainly consider that. Uh, in terms of ground rules, uh, I've said it many, many times, and I'll say it again. Um, I am no expert in any way, shape, or form when it comes to to electronics, and certainly when it comes to circuit design. Um, I'm certainly here to learn to. How, you know, how this works and how impedance matching works and the like. Uh, again, I've said it before, the whole idea of these videos from my point of view um, is to try and encourage others to give it a go. Um, if I can do it, then and honestly, anybody can. Um, these rigs are never supposed to be replacements for commercial rigs in any way. Um, for me, it's just the pure joy of of putting it together and actually hearing something come out of the receiver or if actually managed to transmit hearing something come out of another radio um, you know to me that sort of rekindles what I, I had years ago as a child with um, crystal sets so that's what I'm trying to get out of here um, I definitely want to follow my current um, idea that uh, doing the maths um, I, I really don't get any kind of enjoyment from just copying circuits off the internet or out of a book. Um, if I do, I need to understand how that particular circuit works. Um, and I quite do enjoy sort of starting from the ground up, get the spec sheet, try and work out what I'm trying to do, and then do the maths. So again, that'll be a, a major thrust for any of these radios is to, is, to, is to try and do the maths and at least try and get it right. Um, I've mentioned I don't want to copy um, circuits. Um, and I guess the other, the other sort of um, not restriction, but another sort of thing I try and do is is, is just try and use commonly available parts. You know, you've seen it many times, the, the 3904, the 3906, uh, the BD139, um, sort of commonly available parts um, is, is, is what I'm trying to do. I, I don't really want to try and get in the game of uh, going through and trying to find the most exotic transistor with a great amount of gain and, and huge EFTs. Um, and that sort of comes back to that that desire of trying to encourage others to give it a go. If I can stick with some you know, relatively common components, then they're easy to get hold of um, and easy for people to give it a go. So anyway, I'm going to um, leave it there. Uh, so that's the four options again. Please, um, 
I encourage you to, to, to leave a comment, either one, two, three, four, and if you do four, you know, what would you like to see? Um, and I'll tally those up in a week or so, um, and then we'll see what flows out of that. But uh, that's probably enough for now. I'll say 73s, and um, we will see what comes out of the comments. Cheers all.